Thanks for tuning in at Brackies. Hello everyone and welcome to video number 26 in Make a Game, a cool series on making a video game in Unity. So in today's video we're going to take a look at uploading to the web. So this is the plan for today. First up we are going to take a look at setting up uh, the quality settings in Unity. There's also some player settings that we'll have to configure. Then we'll talk about uh, using the Unity web player versus exporting for WebGL. Uh, and uh, finally, we'll uh, configure the HTM, uh, HTML file, meaning how your game is presented, and then be uploading to either a site or our own site. So I'll show you a kind of uh, your options on uh, distributing a web-based game. Cool. So as always, if you have any questions throughout this video, head over to forum.brackies.com where I'm sure you'll get your questions answered. Awesome. So the very first thing was quality settings. So as always, let op let's open up Unity and uh, the player icon is not going to be important uh, this time. However, we'll have to go to edit, project settings and then quality. And you can see our different quality levels here. I excluded them in the last video uh, because I thought that the default settings uh, were fine uh, when it comes to uh, a standalone player. However, I will give you the option to tweak this uh, in uh, a web player. So you can see that we have the different build options here and we have the different quality levels uh, that you can check for these. And you can choose the default uh, for each of them here and it will be highlighted in green. So each level here has some different settings and you can see for, uh, for a web here, it uses the medium quality. You can also add a quality tier or a quality level. And uh, under the medium quality, we see that we use a pixel light count of 30. That means that we can have 30 lights uh, in the scene, scene at the same time at maximum and that's fine for us. The texture quality is going to be full res, which is great. Uh, Antistropic, uh, and isotropic textures um, is uh, a, a per texture. Uh, you can set this to forced uh, on if you want to get rid of this blurring when viewing textures from uh, certain angles. You can see that it it uh, how, kind of what that looks like in the scene here when I change a point of view. And that might be something that you will want to prioritize uh, with this game because we're going to be viewing this from the side at all times. But again, I'm just going to leave it at per texture here, uh, so I'll make uh, so that I'm sure it will run fine uh, when I'm recording too. Anti-aliasing, I don't recommend going above uh, four x multi-sampling on this one. Um, it's uh, if you don't know what anti-aliasing uh, does, aliasing uh, is it uh, kind of uh, make sure that you get these smooth, smooth edges. So if I just disable this, you can see that we get this uh, these. Um, uh, blocky lines here, uh, kind of pixelated and, and harsh. And if I bump this up to eight, you can see that it smooths uh, that out completely. So two is decent and uh, uh, I think it'll suit us fine. You can turn on soft particle uh, particles here, um, but that's not going to be needed for our game. And uh, the rest we'll just ignore here. And uh, when it comes to shadows, I think our settings are going to be fine. I mean, we are aren't really viewing these shadows from any, from any crazy angles and it uh, does give us a hard answer of shadows uh, which is fine. Cool, so now that we've kind of set those up we can also look at what settings it chooses for our WebGL export here and those are uh, more moderate, uh, currently it's set to half the resolution uh, no anti-aliasing, uh, you'll notice the pixel light count is, is very low this time but Again, that doesn't make a huge difference for us. Uh, only if we have like a bunch of coins, which all have light on them, uh, you'll you'll notice that. And uh, you can also see that the shadows are set to hard shadows only. But this is really about playing around. Um, and uh, you can, of course, read a lot about how you can optimize your game so you can bump up these settings. Cool. So uh, let's go to the player settings. So let's go under project settings and then player. And uh, these can also be accessed under uh, file, build settings, and then player settings from here. 
So right now you can see that I've uh, go ahead and changed our build to WebGL. Uh, so the default one is PSIG Mac and Linux standalone. And if you want to switch platform, you simply select the platform you want to switch to. Uh, in my case, I've selected WebGL here and then click switch platform. And uh, it's that easy. You can see I could do the same with the web player. I've just gone ahead and done this before uh, I restarted the recording because it can be a slow process, especially if you have a lot of assets in your scene. Cool. So uh, you can see here we have a bunch of... Okay, uh, just while I rem uh, remember this, make sure all of your scenes are uh, in the scenes and build list or they will not be loaded and you'll have errors. Cool. So... These are the settings for the WebGL export. And again, I'll talk about the differences in a second. And here you can see you can adjust the uh, resolution of the player. And that's something you can also edit at a later time. Uh, you can adjust whether or not you want this to be able to run in the background. And uh, I think uh, we'll just leave that on. And then you can choose an HTML template. And we're just going to use the default one here. Icon and uh, splash image. Uh, can pretty much be ignored. If you do, uh, I think this requires the pro version still, uh, but you can disable the Unity uh, splash screen. That means the Unity icon showing at startup. And then we have some other settings here, which I think we'll just leave for now. On the publishing settings, you also have some configurational options, but I think all of this is a bit too advanced still. The default settings will work just fine for us. So just check that your company name and product name is as you want it to be and that the resolution makes sense for your game. Then you can go ahead and hit build and run over here. We don't want to check development build. And then you can choose a place to build it. I've gone ahead and made a builds folder under the make a game project folder where I have my Mac builds, my Windows builds and my WebGL builds here. And you can see that I've built this already because WebGL is still in preview and therefore might take a, uh, quite a while and sometimes you'll even need to restart the editor because something goes wrong in the process. So be aware that uh, this is not really a final solution. Okay, so I think it's time that we talk about web player versus WebGL. And uh, we'll take a look at the web player player settings in a second. So uh, up to... Quite recently, uh, Unity has been using a plugin, uh, the Unity Web Player plugin, uh, that uh, in order to support playing their games in a browser. So you have this possibility to export to a web player, and then you can uh, upload it to any kind of a web server. And uh, all that the user needs to do in order to play it is visit the site and then uh, download the plugin if it isn't installed already. However, uh, this, uh, this Unity plugin uses a Chrome API called the NP API. Uh, whoops, I wrote that wrong. Uh, so I'll just write it here, the NP API. And uh, the NP API is basically an API for programming uh, plugins uh, that Chrome has supported up until uh, quite recently. In 2013, they announced that this would be soon, soon would be deprecated and uh, then entirely removed. And that forced Unity to kind of redo and rethink how they wanted to do uh, uh, Unity games on the web. So what this means for us is that the web player currently works just fine on Firefox and Internet Explorer and other browsers, but on Chrome, it will not work. You can go ahead and enable the NP API still, even though it's deprecated, but uh, Google has said that they will entirely remove this feature uh, in a uh, near future. So, uh, since most people are using Chrome the, uh, these days, uh, you, it's worth considering doing something else. And Unity is doing so. They are adding support for WebGL-based games. If you don't know, WebGL is a graphics API, or it's more than that now, but it's another API for uh, writing uh, uh, games or graphics software um, on the browser. 
And uh, there are a lot of uh, good things about WebGL. First off, you dr- drastically uh, reduce load times. Uh, you don't have this loading bar. It just jumps right in. And uh, also, it's, uh, su- it's now, of course, <laughs> supported on Chrome. However, WebGL is still in preview, and it's been so uh, for quite a while now. And uh, it's fair to say that WebGL is, is pretty... Uh, unstable at this point. So let me just show you what this WebGL build looks like in the browser. You can see that this can be opened in Chrome. I'll just go ahead and do so. Uh, Just a moment here. So we'll open this in Chrome. Whoops, I get an error here. Just give me one second and I'll see what's wrong. Okay, so I'm back and I just quickly read up on what was happening here. Uh, Well, basically, um, I found this page in the Unity documentation and I'd completely forgotten about this because it's been a while since I've uploaded to uh, WebGL. Well, uh, if you go down here, uh, it will say that uh, you can view your WebGL player directly in the Firefox browser by simply opening the index.html file. For safety reasons, most other browsers place restrictions on scripts open from a local file. Uh, so this technique will not work. When uh, you go in and uh, build your game using build and run and then open it um, and set it to automatically open in Chrome, however, it will uh, work because then it will temporarily set up a local server. And uh, it did so with me. It set up this local host 54915 where I can access uh, my game and this is going to be different for you Uh, but if it does so that's great and you can open your game here Uh, if not then I suggest you test it in Firefox well you can see our game is currently working here and I can roll back and forward and can uh, change the music and I'll go ahead and play the game here and you can see that we can also uh, maximize the game. And uh, the game is indeed working, uh, not as pretty as the web j- uh, player, but it is indeed working. So okay. just go ahead and die here and you can see that w- that works just fine. So again, if it didn't set up that local host, uh, then I suggest just running it uh, in Firefox when testing it locally like this. Um, but know that it is supported in the Chrome browser. You'll just have to host it in order for people to um, play it. So I'll just open with uh, Firefox here to show you that this indeed uh, does work. So you can see that I've opened it in Firefox here and we'll just wait for it to load. And you can see that loading is much faster than it would be on a uh, web player uh, using the plugin. Cool. So that's it for WebGL. What do we do if we want to export to the much more stable web player? I think this is the best option so far. Uh, I know you're using, uh, losing a, a percentage of the market, uh, but a lot of people play uh, Unity games uh, on Firefox and Internet Explorer, and that works just fine. So if we want to build for a web player, all we have to do is change switch platform to the web player. And it's just going to hold on for a second there. And uh, all of these settings we can leave as is. Then we'll go over here. Again, we can change the uh, screen width and screen height. And we can change the template. And again, icon can be ignored. The same with splash image. And all of these other settings can also be ignored. Now we'll go ahead and hit build and run. Uh, Actually, I'll just hit build. And uh, then we can make a new folder. And we'll call this... Um, web player and uh, we'll just hit select folder and it will start building so we'll just wait a, wait a second here and if we open this up inside of our explorer and open up the web player folder here we can just check out the folder structure that it will generate in a second or the file structure I should say So you can see here inside of our web player, it's created only two files. So you can see that exporting to WebGL creates this fairly complicated hierarchy of folders and files. Um, You have the compressed game, you have an HTML file that you use to load the game in and uh, all of this other data. Whereas on uh, in the web player folder, you only have two files. You have the HTML file, which shows your game and you have a .unity3d file, which 
is the game itself. So you can also see the, the uh, size difference between these two. So if we want to now run our game, we'll just have to right click and open with Firefox. And uh, you can see that it now uh, displays right there and it actually loaded really, really quickly. Uh, but I've also been loading this game before, so that might be the reason why. Load times will uh, often be much slower. So you can see we can play our game here and it looks a whole lot better than the web player uh, or the WebGL version uh, so far. So the game is working. Cool. But what we can do is we can edit this HTML file. Whoops. We can edit the HTML5 uh, file to change uh, the way that we present our game. So in order to do this, and this is very easy, especially if you know HTML, uh, we just need to right click on this HTML file and hit edit with notepad. And this might look a bit frightening, uh, but uh, bear with me here. And you can do the same thing with uh, the uh, WebGL export. So we have an uh, HTML structure, then we have some uh, JavaScript code, we also have some CSS, and uh, then finally we have some more HTML. So the first part here is all of the HTML that shows uh, above the actual player. The JavaScript is responsible for loading the player in. The CSS is responsible for styling all of the animal elements in our HTML. And uh, the last HTML part here is responsible for what is shown after the actual plugin. And this also contains uh, an error if the uh, web player is not um, supported in the browser, isn't installed. So we can actually just go ahead and change a bunch of things here. So we could, for example, change this from Unity Web Player Make a Game to uh, uh, as something else. If you want to do that, we can go down here and change the font size and weight and all of that. Uh, or maybe uh, since this is a Brackey's tutorial, um, we could add on to this. So here it says that it was created with Unity. We could say, and using uh, the make a game tutorial series from uh, from and then brackies and we'll change the title here to go to brackies.com and we'll change the URL here to brackies.com so we can save this out and we can close this we can run this with Fi Firefox and you can see that it loads in the game and down here it says created with Unity and using the Mega Game Tutorial series from Brackies and you can click that there and it will go to Brackies.com so you can change that file however you want uh, it to be. Cool, so now that you have your game you've chosen the option that you want to export it, uh, that you want to use when exporting you have chosen uh, how you want it to display, now you have to choose how you want it to be uploaded. Well, before we have this uh, possibility of uploading uh, Unity games using Dropbox, but that has gotten pretty clunky lately and uh, is not even really an option for uh, free, uh, Dropbox accounts that are free. So instead, we are going to have uh, to look at two possibilities. The first one is uploading to a site. And if this is something you want to do, well, then you can just completely ignore your HTML file. Then you'll go ahead and upload this Unity 3D file. And uh, places to upload to could be congregate, uh, or uh, you could also upload to something like, um, what's it called? Uh, it's called uh, Newgrounds or uh, armor games, uh, there are a bunch of uh, places th that you can uh, place your game uh, if you don't want to host it yourself. So for example here you see uh, the Congregate web website where you can go and uh, you can see that I've uploaded a game here called Kill Pill quite a long time ago and uh, you can go in here and simply up hit upload your game, fill in some information and a category and then upload the Unity 3D file and all that. So that is definitely an option. Or if you want to host this yourself, well, uh, then you can just, uh, if you're using WordPress or whatever, uh, use some kind of uh, FTP 
client. So FTP stands for File Transferring Protocol. I'm using the program called FileZilla, but this will require some hosting. So you will have to uh, kind of uh, pay for a domain. Uh, I, of course, own brackies.com. So if I just quickly go ahead and connect to my website here, there we go. Uh, you can see all of the files that are on the brackies.com domain uh, on my hosting provider. And uh, I'm using WordPress, um, but most or uh, pretty much all uh, web file structures has a public HTML folder where you can place different files that you want to, uh, people to be able to access uh, without requiring a password or getting through any kind of protection. And uh, in here we can then create a directory and we can maybe name this uh, make a game and uh, we can double click that and uh, then we can simply drag our two files into this so we'll maybe rename this to make a game uh, web build and uh, we'll rename this to the same drag those two in there and uh, actually let's just make sure that we we probably need to yeah we need to edit the uh, name of the unity file in here too so whenever you change the file there you need to change it there too because it initializes the plugin by loading uh, this file uh, so I think that's all we need to do uh, hopefully let's just make sure that this is working by running it in Firefox yep that was all we needed to do uh, and so we need to do the same thing here we can simply remove those two and uh, drag in the new ver versions there we go and uh, now you should be able to go to your domain so I'll type in brackies.com slash make a game slash uh, make a game web build dot html and you can see that it says chrome cannot run this app and uh, if we do the same thing in Firefox, if we open this up, it should simply load the game. So you can now share this URL with all your friends and they will be able to uh, load that up. Oops. Leave that. Cool. So that's basically how you can uh, export your game for the web. You have some different options there and uh, how you can upload it to a side of your choosing. I know that Unity Games on the web is kind of on a weird middle ground right now uh, where it's, it's in the process of transitioning from the web player to WebGL but uh, try and look at it, at it as uh, a lot of possibilities instead of a lot of restrictions uh, which it uh, sometimes can feel like. So uh, I hope you enjoyed this video and, and found it informational and uh, uh, a lot of these uh, things, uh, depending on what you choose, is something that will require you to search up uh, on how to upload to Congregate or uh, a guide on FTP uploading to a server and all of that because it's simply too much for me to cover in one video. But you should get, hopefully, get an understanding on how this works from uh, this video. So that pretty much concludes the Make a Game course. I don't have much more to show you when it comes to uh, this game. And uh, I hope you've enjoyed the process and, and learning some stuff with me. And uh, well, from this point, I suggest you check out some of the other courses that are available on the Brackies YouTube channel. Uh, there are a lot of stuff on uh, C Sharp programming, uh, both inside and outside of Unity, which I suggest you check out. Uh, a cool uh, thing to start doing now would maybe uh, uh, learning from the uh, How to Program in C Sharp course, and then maybe uh, using that together with the How to uh, Make a 2D Platformer course uh, in order to get a, a deep understanding of how to program in C Sharp and how to uh, apply more advanced programming concepts uh, to uh, game development in Unity. So that's really something I suggest you check out now. And uh, there will be some links on the screen here. 
Uh, so click on those. And again, thanks for watching. Make sure you subscribe to stay tuned for the next series that I will be introducing, which I hope will be super cool. And uh, yeah, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Thank you.